I'm going to take you on a walking tour right through the heart of London, starting at Piccadilly Circus. Piccadilly Circus was center of the universe during the days of empire and is today a major intersection from which several busy streets radiate. Filled with both tourists and locals, there is always something going on here. Merely the size of one block and a lot of things to see and to photograph. This is the very center of town. It's like the Times Square of London the hub of the city. Now the really best way to see London or any European city for that matter is to walk through the town. With our Hawaii Geographic Society trips we always provide walking tours to help get you oriented and then there's some free time to go off on your own. And then we come to Regent Street, one of the most majestic promenades in town offering a sweeping urban vista and all the way up Regent Street, major retailers continue for nine blocks, including Europe's largest toy store, Hamley's, and Liberty, a designer department store. This famous stretch of Regent Street was designed at the beginning of the 19th century by John Nash, one of England's most important architects. Particularly impressive when you stop after a few blocks and look back from the corner of Vigo Street. Gerard, Jewelers to the Crown, is adjacent, as is Austin Reed, another major clothing store. For now, take a right on Old Bond Street into the most expensive shopping turf in town. Looks like FDR and Churchill, that's right, are two great leaders from World War II. And it makes a nice little park bench to sit down and grab a group shot at. And of course these photos become great souvenirs for everybody when the trip's over to help them relive it. Perhaps whisper some tips in their ear, or you can sit on their lap. There's a little room for you to squeeze in between them and sit down on the bench in the middle. It's okay, these are outdoor bronze statues and they're meant to be touched and photographed. So go ahead and have a blast, makes a nice souvenir. This is the most deluxe shopping street in the city, Old Bond Street, which is the most elegant and exclusive neighborhood in London for Tony shops. You've got Chanel and Gucci and Hermes. There's auction houses here and the jewelry stores galore. The exclusive shops on Old Bond include Tiffany, David Morris, Bulgari, Pate Philippe, George Jensen, Asprey, and four dozen more, just in the first three blocks alone, assembled as the biggest concentration of high-end retail in the nation. Walk on by, not purchasing, but browsing to the slightly less lofty northern stretch called New Bond Street. There are more beautiful shops for clothing, shoes, jewels, and designer goods all the way to Oxford Street. Window shopping is great fun and provides something useful and fascinating to do in that hour between breakfast and the 10 a.m. opening bell for stores and most attractions. And you can be scoping things out, doing a reconnaissance to decide where you might want to come back to later Around the corner, you'll run into Oxford Street. It's the busiest shopping boulevard for locals, one mile long and loaded with 60 shoe stores, just as many clothing outlets, the huge department store Selfridges, which is second in size to Harrods only, giant record shops, many jewelers, sporting goods stores, and much, much more. But there is actually not that much of interest here to the visitor unless you are primarily on a shopping trip. Otherwise, have a brief look this morning, walk along for a couple blocks to get a quick feel, and then skip it. Turning left on Davies Street. Davies Street has a more peaceful residential character with hardly any shops at all. Keep walking south on Davies, and then taking a break at Barclay Square. Whenever we're on our walking tours, we try and sit down somewhere about once every hour, take a breather, five or ten minutes, kick back and relax, and 
What better spot could you find than Barclay Square? London has quite a few of these small parks scattered throughout the city. It's a very nice little oasis in the heart of town. Some breathing room sit under the trees. From Barclay Square, exit the park on the southeast end. Along the way you will pass Brown's Hotel. And this is one of the swankiest places in town for an afternoon tea. Walk up the one block street called Hay Hill, not much of an incline and no longer any hay in sight. We're walking through the Burlington Arcade. It's a covered shopping mall that's over a hundred years old. It's really the forerunner of our modern shopping malls. Past some perfumeries and clothing stores to St. James Square. This is typical of the little green pocket parks that are scattered throughout the heart of London. A nice place for a relaxing break. A small public park like Barclay Square with green lawns, flower beds, inviting benches, many tall trees, and a majestic statue right in the center. Now pass through the park to the other side and continue to Pall Mall, a large fancy street lined with gentlemen's clubs. And on the walking tours, it gives you a chance to get a preview of where you can go back to on your own time with our trips. We always have free time for shopping and pursuing your own interests. Continuing along on our little walking tour, you're watching the Hawaii Geographic Society's World Traveler. We're showing you our trip from Rome to London. We've taken you on this trip many times on World Traveler. And each time we present some different images some different angles, different perspectives of what you're seeing. There's another beautiful park is St. James Park. And here you'll enjoy a very pleasant stroll going over the footbridge that crosses the lake. And after the bridge, turn right and follow the path along the lake. Notice the swans, maybe some pelicans and ducks. Just having a look now at the horse guards on parade as they come riding down the mall. This is part of that very colorful ceremony, the changing the guards. Majestic black horses with the mounted soldiers in their golden armor. Quite the spectacle, part of the pomp and ceremony of Royal England. We've got lunch to eat, and our destination is Wagamama. Yeah, that's the name of the restaurant. They specialize in noodles, Japanese noodle cuisine. You can get dry noodle plates or you can get noodles in soup. We've got about 30 different dishes here. Really a tremendous variety of types of noodle dishes and some other dishes as well. There's a favorite. We have buckwheat noodles, whole wheat noodles, rice dishes.